And welcome to Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World. I'm Richard Dugan, your host. Thank you so much for joining us here on the program. Today's program is going to be dealing well with uh, a main subject, but we're going to probably go all over the place as we usually do. Returning guests. We love to have guests who return uh, to our program to talk about the work that they are doing. Karen Abrams is my guest. Thank you so much for being back with us again. This is going to be, I think it's going to be a lot of fun and very educational. I hope entertaining uh, as well as inspiring uh, because um, there is a certain element, I believe, in this this conversation we're going to have that people need to remember to be grateful. I think that gratitude in all areas of life, but especially this one, seems to me like um, you, you need to make it, a, 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 a incorporate it. I like to use the word grok. They need to grok it. Uh, look, you know, it's that's a word from stranger in a strange land. It's like to assimilate into every cell, every subatomic particle of your being, the the concept. So thank you for being with us to help us to do that. Well, I am so honored to be here again, Richard. It's so much fun. So much fun the first time I had to come back again. Uh, first of all, I love the color blue you're wearing. Uh, thank you. you. Know, I love this color. It's like my uh, favorite color. This is like uh, my, such a happy color for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Between for me, between that and uh, the purple uh, that I grew up with, with the Phoenix Suns, yeah. uh, that was one of their colors. Uh, there you uh, go, there you go. Loved that. Loved that. Uh, not not so much the Suns because we had two shots at a world championship in the 70s yeah. and 90s and we missed it by that much. But that's another story for another program. Uh, Today's program, <laughs> we're going to focus. Forgiveness. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're we're going to talk about money. Um, mm -hmm. but I think that what we need to do, cause everybody has a little different take on it. I think Great. one of the things that we might want to do first is define it. What is it and when we talk about it and are we, are we talking here, uh, literally materially or metaphorically, symbolically, spiritually, what, from what perspective do we want to start? Well, I think if we start on this planet, <laughs> the 3D <laughs> world, it's, you know, it's a form of, of exchange, you know, it's an energy exchange. That's what it became, right? It used to be trades for goods or services. And then somebody figured out if we gave these piece of paper or these coins, we can go about this in a different way. And, and so we got into this exchange of value through this. And um, it certainly is a, indicator of the value you have you know that internal value that you have um one of my favorite quotes from one of my mentors uh, is one where she says your net worth will only go as high as your self-worth and i think that's a really great indicator of of what's out there and and where you put yourself especially if you are an entrepreneur and, you know, but other people, you know, going into work and finding a job and it's this much money for this job. And these are the kind of jobs I keep getting. And so I think that energy that, you know, I, I believe that the universe reflects back what you put out into it. And so and what you focus on start showing up more in your life. So if you are having money issues and look, we've had inflation, we've had a lot of disruptors that have been going on. Obviously, politically, it's been a bit of an up and down for the mm -hmm. past, you know, eight years, there's been a bigger struggle than, than even before that. And, and that tends to get people to vote for their pocketbook. And even when it doesn't necessarily help them, which is kind of wild, but you know, there's also misinformation that's in there that, that helps them mm -hmm. vote against themselves essentially. So there, you know, it, it's, it's a big subject. It's one that I think of it, you know, as a healer. And I do this work called Theta Healing, which is all about doing a process that helps you connect to your inner wisdom and your subconscious mind so that you can shift those beliefs and those feelings that are causing you to either, you know, be held back in your life because you believe you're not, you know, you're worth nothing and, and, um, nothing ever is going to go well for you, or I'm always going to struggle with money it would be one of them too. Right. Or you have mm -hmm. feelings that have put a mark on you like trauma, you know, we can have poverty or money trauma and people can have all sorts of trauma and all sorts of grief. I usually think about money issues as life issues that have hit your wallet. 
right? Mm. And you don't mm. know for everybody, it's going to be something different. And we can talk about changing these beliefs on the subconscious level, which is really important because what you believe and what you feel, right? You're just going to pull more of that experience to you because your ego and your mind wants you to be right. See, mm. I knew life was hard. I knew it's a struggle. It's a struggle for every penny. I knew it. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. And that gives us that sense of security, not comfort, yeah, but security that I know how the world works. This is the way it works. This is the way it's worked for me. And this is the way it's worked for my dad, my grandfather. You know, life has always been this way. And so, and even when we want to come out of it and say, yeah, I know that sometimes we still have those old ancestral beliefs that are there messing with us with this new thought of, you know, I can create my own reality. I can change that. Those things can change. And then you get this other part that's saying this, right? It's the devil and the angel on the shoulders. Mm -hmm. And so that conflict can create a weird energy signature, you know, for lack of a better way to put it so that you'll get money and then it'll go away. I, I like to call those a, a snapback. Have you ever had mm -hmm. those where you get like a downfall of money Yeah, and then all of a sudden, you know, your radiator falls out of your car Yeah, and there goes the money or, you know, you, you find out there's a plumbing issue or there's something, whatever it is, it's something or a health issue gone. And you're like, well, I'm glad I had that money to give to this thing, but why is that something that's happened more than once? And that's usually because of a complicated relationship with money. And I, and I also just believe that money is that place where we can love ourselves or we may not it just as much as any other relationship that that's a relationship that needs to be tended to. Yeah. So we've got self-fulfilling prophecies. We've got the outside right. messages from coming in. Um, we've got the experiences as you just described uh, inflow yeah. in, in, in money comes in, goes out almost as fast and those kinds of right. things. And this is where uh, I mentioned earlier about gratitude. Let's talk about right. the the money that comes in and then goes out just as fast. The radiator falls out of the car, for example, and, right. and what have you. And instead of being upset over the fact that oh, I was going to use that for something else, being right. grateful, oh, thank God that money was there so I can take care of the radiator and keep the car going. You know, right, right. And then we also have, from the philosophical perspective, we have, um, and and of course, I was born and raised uh, Catholic, and of course, uh, uh -huh. you know, read the Bible uh, uh, several times, especially the New Testament, where Jesus uh -huh. talks about how uh, his disciples are all bent out of shape over where are we going to sleep tonight, and what am I going to wear tomorrow, and what are we going to eat? No, no, no. He says, wait a minute, hold the phone. No phones back then, but anyway. I was to say, uh, even though it wasn't invented, this is what he meant. <laughs> that's what he meant. That's exactly what he meant. Um, do you see that bird up in the tree? That bird doesn't work. It doesn't toil. And yet it's taken care of. Look at the flowers, the lilies of the field. Today, look how beautiful they are. And tomorrow, they're going to blow away in the wind. And yet, you are one of the creator's creation, if you will. If you want to use the ch you know, child analogy, what have you, how much more will you be taken care of? So we have that perspective of, hey, don't worry about it. You're going to have what you need. And then there is, there's that other aspect, too, of, of what you just talked about as well in terms of, oh, well, life, life isn't fair and this and that and the other. And you can justify that right, statement yeah. by looking at the people who are. And I don't even know what term to use anymore. The homeless, the houseless, right, yeah. uh, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Uh -huh. But those people who do not have a structure to go into to lay down their head right, and keep yeah. their clothes in yeah. and their food and so on and so forth and their families. Mm -hmm. And so we have, it seems like, Karen, we have a lot in a matter of speaking, we have a lot to overcome. Mm-hmm. How, where do we begin? Now you have a quiz we'll talk about in a minute. I actually took mm -hmm. this, uh, mastering your money quiz. Um, uh -huh. and, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go over that in a moment, but from your perspective, especially with the right. theta healing that you do, mm -hmm. where do we begin? Those of us, those who are listening or watching uh -huh. to start the process if, as I have stated on this program, I'm now in a position to say, universe, I want more and I want to start with $100,000 to do this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. where, where, where do I start? Where do we start? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a very good question. You know, in this work, we 
go into this, I call it a very powerful meditation to access both of those things, your subconscious mind, because this is where everything's at and that divine wisdom so that you can bring those two things together. The most loving perspective you would have on everything that's happened to you, everything that you believe so that you can shift these beliefs because that sense of who you are was created with a nascent brain, right? From zero to seven, we are in theta all the time. And which means that everything that people say to you, everything that people do to you, everything that you say to others and do to others is all imprinted in this brain, which is why your subconscious mind is why the child, your childhood is so powerful because everything just gets boom right in there. And as you know, especially with parenting, if we all had to apply to be a parent, no one would get the job. Nobody's qualified, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and so you need to, you, nobody's really good because the things that come up now, you're like, how was I supposed to get ready for that one? Right. Yeah. And yeah. you know, what's thrown at people at times, right. We, we've got to kind of collect ourselves and, and, and move forward. So with this work, we go to find out what's holding you back. What are those beliefs? What are the things that you're feeling that are trapped? What is it? Abandonment and grief and trauma, you know, and get to these bottom things. And then, like I said, when you're in the theta brainwave, you, your mind can talk to your body. Mm. And we know even in Chinese medicine, we know another, and even in Western medicine, we hold emotions in different organs. Right. Mm -hmm. And in, in Western medicine, we say, well, you know, you get ulcers in your stomach, you know, you're stressed out. Right. We talk a lot about stress as being a focal point of disease and inflammation in Chinese medicine you know, we'll say, oh, okay, so there's anger in the liver in this work, you know, there's anger in your and resentment in your kidneys. So we're holding different emotions in different, in different organs. It's just kind of where it's held. So when you can shift these, you know, transform these emotions into unconditional love and understanding and compassion, mm -hmm. you start feeling better and lighter. And, and this wonderful process starts where, because you're feeling better, you start making better decisions and you start letting in people who have healthy boundaries, like your boundaries are getting healthier, right? Because now you feel like you deserve more from the inside out. We know that, you know, you know, cerebrally, you know, we, we, we know and intellectually, you know, I deserve more than that. Right. And I deserve I'm a good person. I help people. I could do this or even, or I'm a business person. I'm out there doing my work. I should get this. And so we know all of those things, but we don't necessarily feel it. And unless we get into our subconscious mind and change it at that level, we're just painting a dirty wall. And so we'll get the, you know, I'll, we'll get, I'm wealthy and people love me, you know, and do these affirmations. And I just remember when I first found out about affirmations, they didn't help me. All they helped me realize is what I really believed. So if I'm a money magnet and people love me, and at that moment, I'm like, both of those aren't really that true. You know, and yeah. so why am I saying it in the mirror? This is ridiculous. And mm -hmm. so I'd go there and I'd shut myself off because I, I knew that there was something else. But I, at that point in time, I didn't know how to reach for that and find it. And mm -hmm. um, and so oh, we, we can go, come from that space and really get in there to change that stuff. And then it also helps you with procrastination because we have these barriers where we know there's something we should be doing. You're like, eh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's probably something, you know, that you can do that might help out and you're not doing it because it's too much of a pain on the butt or <laughs> I'll suffer because of it, or I'll have to leave my wife for a little while to get it done. And I, you know, you're making a choice over a choice yeah, yeah. and you know, things like that. And so what happens well, is those invisible barriers start going down and it's like, yeah. Oh, I could do that. Yeah. Oh, 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 I could do that. You know, I and then you, I want to stop you there for just a moment. Yeah. I want you to help me to, uh, to, to, I want you to clarify something for me. The difference sure. between, cause you talked about deserving. Yeah. All right. Now my parents, my mother's 90 this year, my father's passed wow. on. Uh -huh. They sent me, sent us children, all six of us, their last yeah. will and Testament, like years ago. Uh -huh. I remember reading through it and um, I, I, I will inherit certain, you know, certain things. Okay. Right. But, but I, I don't know why this went through me after I read it. I'm going, they didn't leave me anything. Uh -huh. And I almost called one of my sisters to, to say, what's the deal? How come? And I thought about and and, and, and I thought, now oh, maybe I'll call my mom. And I thought, no, 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 no. And then I got that internal. Will you please reread the will? 
reread mm-hmm. it, boy. Uh. <laughs> I, did. I did. And it's uh. like, oh my God, it's right there. What is my problem? Yeah. I almost made some phone calls that would have gotten me into probably right. hot water. Needless right. to say, what I want you to define the difference between deserving and to me that inheritance, if you will, because mm-hmm. I'm their child, I deserve, and I'm not saying that, let me back it up, deserving versus entitled to. And I know a lot of people who ha, they're, they're in the will mm-hmm. and they yeah. think they're entitled to, or mm-hmm. the government, they think that the government, they're entitled to this, that, and the other thing as opposed to deserving. Talk a little bit about the juxtaposition. And maybe there are other words that I'm not using that would better split that atom, if you will, um, in terms of recognizing, hey, I am worthy versus look who I am, give it to me. Mm -hmm. Right. I I believe that the worthiness has to do with, like we said, the value that you believe that you already have. Mm Mm-hmm. I understand that self-esteem is also like a value that you reflect off somebody else. So if you Mm -hmm. treat me poorly, then I think, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not worth it. And so I think poorly of myself and entitlement is, has that extra added. It does have deserving in it, which is, which is healthy and entitlement tends to have and the way that we use it now mm-hmm. is that it's already in place that um that there's been practice here that it's already been given for no reason right because if you're wealthy then you feel entitled to um take people's water from the valley you know like, like right, right. you feel like you give yourself license to do um to go beyond where you're at so it can be used in a healthy i mean I kind of get that that you can be entitled and and still be a person of um with ethics and all of those sorts of things. We tend to hear it more in a negative spin now. Mm. Mostly in the collective we talk about being entitled is a bad thing. But yeah. if you feel entitled to having a wonderful life then and you feel entitled to joy and you feel entitled to having a joyful life, no one's going to um no one's going to call you a bastard for that. You know, yeah. <laughs> like well, the well, founding use, fathers, the founding right. fathers even said we have certain inalienable rights, and one right. of those uh-huh. happens to be. And I even asked this question of my last few guests. I, 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 and I put this to you too. Do you think maybe they knew something about this, and that's why they put it in there? In a, in addition to life, liberty, which are only a few, they said these mm-hmm. among them are the mm-hmm. pursuit of happiness. They are not saying right. your entire your inalienable right is happiness. It's right. the pursuit. Do you think they knew something? What, what 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 that was about and that's why they put that in there i believe that obviously i mean we're talking about the 1700s so people yeah. really had to work hard just to make what they had so life was a struggle and life was yeah. hard so instead of saying they're entitled to be happy that i don't know that that was an option for many and maybe mm. not even an option for the founding fathers because they tended to be wealthy and men for the yeah. most part they were definitely very intelligent men um, for the most part. And so they had that sense of an ideal, you know, and brought together, there was a lot of great thinkers in there. There were also people, other kinds of people there too, but it feels like it's, it's more about that, that, that they just, they knew that happiness was something, but happiness was more of a goal as opposed to, you know, that it, the journey was getting to happiness. Uh-huh. And they they did have happiness, you know, if they had a kid or, you know, there's, there's a marriage and those sorts of things, there was happiness and it was fleeting. Yeah. I mean, think about what life was like, you know, yeah. there was, there were no toilets, you know I mean? Like there's no yeah. sewage, you know, they, there's, there's no sewer systems there, you know, there were different things that, that we find that is just so we feel entitled to having a toilet in our house. Yeah. We feel entitled to have a sink. You know, so there's certain things that we already believe that since they're here, they'll always be here. So therefore, that's just part of my reality. So um, it's just that we tend to look at wealth and entitlement inside wealth is a wealthy person is taking something away from somebody else because they feel like they're entitled to things that don't even belong to them. Yeah. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about that, too, in terms of 
uh, the volume of things, resources, yeah. we'll use that broad perspective. Uh, because obviously within the metaphysical community in particular, there is this whole conversation around uh, the attitude of lack, not uh -huh. having enough. And uh -huh. when I say I am content and I want more, that is not because I'm not content, because I, I want more because I don't have enough. No, right. it's because I want to mm -hmm. do more. And of course, even, even in scripture, it says, uh, to whom much is given uh, much is expected or, uh, you know, there's a greater responsibility there. And I, I'm uh -huh. good with that. I understand that. So talk to us about, because yeah. that is a, that's really is a, a ingrained in us, especially here in this country that has so much. Right. You have to work hard to yeah. make a living. You have to work hard to achieve your dreams. Yeah. yeah. There's, and, and that's the, oh gosh, what were they called? Who are who are the pilgrims? I am so sorry. I'm, I'm having a mommy brain moment. Well, they, they were, were certainly the, um, the religious who came over here to Puritans. Puritans. Ah, sorry, there, there they go. We went ding 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 ding. Puritans Thank you, universe. Yeah, there you go. You came in. So so uh, so they can. You know, they're the first white Europeans to stay. Mm -hmm. How's that? And and then so they kind of made the imprint of life is hard. Life is unenjoyable for the most part. And mm -hmm. then you, you know, you procreate and then you die at some point in time. And that's, and then they also began to believe that, that um, this land was given to them by God mm -hmm. after they were persecuted. And so they came out here to do that. So these were the first Euro Eurocentric belief systems that people were coming into when they came to this country. I'm sure that 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 was also something that was happening in Europe too, because they, you know, there's a lot of suffering and a lot of working hard there too. So I don't know that it was that much different. And they just brought that mindset here. Yeah. And that has stayed. And when we came up with that concept of the American dream, it was work hard and then so that your kids and sacrifice so that your kids could do better than you. Right. When the mm -hmm. immigrants, because mm -hmm. everybody comes from an immigrant, even if you came from the Mayflower, you were an immigrant. Yeah. You came here and, and you're just some of the first people who came over um, or the first Europeans that came over. So, so we started with that kind of ethic and then working the land, right. That kind of ethic, you know, pushing back to take land. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, we, we're, we're the, we're the ones who are blessed by God to do this. And that was their belief. And they thought, you know, and they had to do what people do when they take over countries, they had to demonize or, or um, objectify the people who are already there and say, well, they're godless people and they don't deserve to live. They need to be converted and all of those sorts of things. So, so we went on a whole other path and, and pushed all the native people, right? All the native Americans to different places. Mm -hmm. And so, but that was, that became part of the struggle too. Yeah. So not only were we fighting for wherever nature, you know, can we grow our crops and we, can we feed ourselves? Then we were having battles with native Americans who just wanted to be on their land. They didn't feel sense of ownership. They just were there. This is where they lived and they shared it. And, um, but Europeans came from a different mindset, which was, right, it was cold weather. So you need to gather things together. You need to have a shelter. So mm -hmm. you will live through the and, and survive through the winter. And so that that sense of gathering things and holding on to things and getting, you know, taking from the environment was just part of survival. Yeah. And a way of and a way of gaining prosperity, as it were. That the more objects you had, the more likely you were, the more food you had, the more objects you had, the more shelter you had, the more likely you were going to be able to survive. So that became a sign of wealth. Yeah. Well, and I know, too, that that uh, with that whole dynamic that has existed down through our history uh, of the United States, uh, right. that um, that's just the way it was. It's, we're not saying it's good or bad. It's just that's the way it was. You know, and uh, I, I find it a little frustrating when I hear people uh, criticizing this kind of conversation that we're having 
uh, being taught in classrooms and, oh, you're trying to get people to hate America, you know. And no, we're not. We're trying to take a, a, tr a look at the truth of our history, right. the good, yeah. the bad, and the ugly. It's because, Absolutely. quite honestly, it is all of that that has made us who we are as a country. And it is all yeah. of that same concept that has made each one of us individuals who we are today. Uh, regret, for example, waste. It's a waste because if we could go back in time and undo that, which we regret, right. we wouldn't yeah. be who we are today. Uh, right. And uh, so it's like, okay, I need to start from this place. I I'm a good person. I'm I'm a good man just doing the best I can. Mm -hmm. um, and now I need to take a look at the good, the bad, and the ugly of how I got here. And maybe I have to go through some processing, maybe some counseling, some some therapy, you know, uh, uh -huh. self uh, self examination, that kind of thing to say to 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 uh, uh, what's the word I want to to uh, have some peace over right. those things i'm not it's it's not saying that i was justified or anything it's just saying right. that was part of my life and that was me right. then it's not me yeah. now i've learned right. a lot and that's why mm -hmm. someone asked me not long ago so why don't you talk about all of the mistakes that you've made in your life and i said i've never made a mistake in my life i have had uh -huh. learning experience life lessons learning experiences right. that's mm -hmm. what i've had not mistakes and i realized that that right goes against the grain of what is referred to as the Judeo-Christian ethic in this country, supposedly. Right. But it's like, wait a minute, I thought we had under the First Amendment freedom of religion. And my religion or philosophy, as I like to call it, is that mm -hmm. my beliefs of yesterday are not my beliefs of today, are not my beliefs of tomorrow. I'm learning and growing and experiencing and so forth. Mm -hmm. I want to experience more when it comes to this whole aspect of, and we'll now put a finer point on finance. And we're going to talk more mm -hmm. about that with Karen, Karen Abrams here on uh, uh, the program as we talk about also the Theta Say the healing uh, that uh, she has developed, and we're going to talk more about that here on Tell Me Your Story. And I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and I thank you so much for being with us here with Karen Abrams. And uh, Karen, this is a fascinating conversation that we are going to have here as we continue talking uh -huh. about, um, if I was to paint a broader brush uh, stroke, if you will, it would be abundance, right. prosperity, um, right. And so forth. A finer point might be uh, finance, uh, banking, and so forth. Uh, and you have a quiz that is available uh, from your website, right? That people can take, and they can go there. Uh, by the way, what is that website so that we can start giving that out and people can, uh, while they're listening, they could even take that quiz. Awesome. Okay, it's called Think by T H I N K. So Think Theta T H E T A dot com. And mm -hmm. yeah, just when you go onto the website, the the quiz will come up and it'll give you an opportunity. To, it's a really fun, fun little quiz. And I, I take it um, every once in a while, I'll go and take it too. And what it does is it it gives you a gives you a, a, a viewpoint of where is your relationship with money right now. And then it gives you a theta healing meditation, which really means, and we'll talk about it and you'll experience it later is energetic downloads of healing your relationship wherever it's at yeah so that it can elevate into something else and and also i just like to say that one of the best things that you can do on the ground and this is why when i do energy work with people i'm also giving them practical tools because we got to work on this planet you know we can't mm -hmm. just meditate in a cave and everything's fine and this is more of a process but it gets you into a meditation brainwave because we know that the theta brainwave is a learning brainwave. We know it hits our subconscious. It's also our insight and our creativity. Mm -hmm. And so all these wonderful things and that connection, you know, and it's all these wonderful things. So to get into that state is really great. And it's right when you're going into your dream state. So right when you know you're kind of tipping off, but you're not here, you're not there. You know, you're just, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. just in that hallucination. And when you're in that hallucination, <laughs> your legal hallucination um, you are, you know, you're open, you're open to the insight and the most loving insight there is. So you tell me, I don't need to go so down powerful. to Peru to take ayahuasca. You don't have to do that. You can do this here, but also one thing that you can do on the ground is mm -hmm. 
the best way to get your relationship with money into a better space is really to treat it like a cherished friend. Mm. So have it be a relationship. Like I, I would say, and let me put this out as a big uh, intuition that you have a wonderful relationship with your wife, that you're very connected to, you very much love her and you're very much there for her. Mm. And she is there for you. She loves you like crazy. Like that's the sense I get from mm-hmm. you and that sense of security you have when you talk about her. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's a beautiful relationship. And that's based on how you communicate, how honest you are with each other, how you can be there for each other when you need each other most. And then other times too, you're always there for each other and you enjoy each other. And the same thing you can say about money. If you have a complicated uh, relationship with money, it's because it's not as good as that, but Mm. you can take what you do in your marriage and you can translate that into your relationship with money and say, okay, so honesty, I need to know how much I'm spending. I need to know how much I'm making, right? Um, Enjoy yourself, have, you know, create, accounts where you take a percentage of your money. It doesn't have to be a ton of money, Mm -hmm. but a percentage of that put in a fun account and save it up so that you can feel pampered one day when you make enough money to go on a little trip or a big trip or do something in between and, you know, and then have another account for, you know, your expenses and all these other things that you, you want to do, you know, education and, and, uh, you know, learning and expansion and, fun and what else? And then your expenses, right? And all these different things and taxes so that you can take little pieces out of and percentages and put them in each account so that you can, you're taking care of yourself and you always know how much you have. Yeah. And that will help you feel better because you, you'll you have that sense of control. And, and if you know, we, from, yeah, from, from a technological standpoint, uh, the financial institutions that we do business with, not we, me and my wife specifically, but we collectively uh, yeah. now are uh, actually uh, setting up algorithms and so forth to where you go into your bank account and you can go into a section where they'll say, and here's what you spent. And here's mm-hmm. what you, here, here was the right. income, here was the outgo, right. and here are the categories of spending. And that they actually start putting together for you. So it's not so arduous as it once was. Uh, They're making it a lot easier to do what you just said. Yeah. And you can get, there's a lot of different apps you can get if Mm -hmm. you want on your phone and everybody's got a spending app and da, da, da. And that'll just, you know, that could just do it right away. So all of them that, yeah, it's easier than ever to keep track of it. And now it's really about, getting rid of those emotional, you know, healing those emotional traumas that got in the way. So mm. like if you're having a complicated relationship with money and, and uh, um, then maybe there's some trauma that you're avoiding that you associated with money from before. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, I'll give you an example, this one gentleman that I've worked with um, who had trauma when he was little, when he was young, he had war trauma he, as a, as a citizen. And, um, and he was in the bombings, uh, in, in Europe, in, in London. Okay. When he was a little kid, the Nazi bombings. And so he had that trauma. And then when he was a young man, he enlisted it in the army. He was, well, he didn't enlist. I think he was drafted for Vietnam. So four and probably what, 18 or 20, right? Somewhere. Right. So he's got war trauma on both sides from being a civilian and from being a soldier. And then whatever life gave him in between. Yeah. Which I'm sure we could all list 10 traumas right now (laughs) without having any sort of war experience at all. Yeah. And so he had a lot of trauma. And so at some point in time, he even, you know, became destitute because it just, that's where it manifested a lot in his finances. And when we started working together, we started clearing and healing all these traumas from when he was a child and from when he was a young adult and all the stuff in between. And he was learning because one of the things we said, the theta brainwave, you learn what you're meant to learn from the, and the most positive and loving and compassionate lesson you can learn from whatever happened to you with it, at, even if it's really intense and, and we would view as very tragic. And he learned all these things. He let go of a lot of stuff. You know, he comes back with energy of uh, unconditional love and understanding and compassion. And so then he's a really bright guy. He's a brilliant guy. He's, he's fascinated with money. He's fascinated with investments. 
He starts reading journals. He starts doing all that stuff and then taking his money and investing it and investing it. And over the years, he's set for life now. And did it happen overnight? It wasn't mm -hmm. like he went, oh, here's Apple. Here's, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. And then Apple became Apple, you know, mm -hmm. like yeah. it wasn't that, but over the years he, and now he's set and he's like, I'll, and, and he's able to give money to other people when they need it. And it doesn't affect his station in life. And so when you, so that was his life experience that was holding him back. Mm. And oh, when we got to it, it was great. I want to ask you about something sure. before we get into the quiz. Sure. Uh, great yeah. story too, by the way, a good example of, of uh, it yeah. takes time in many instances. Mm -hmm. What about the difference between, because people talk about this all the time, especially within the, uh, the more um, uh, philosophical community, shall we say, uh -huh. the difference between free will to choose, as I talk about in my book, choice choices, the difference between that and what they talk about in terms of destiny, predestined, preordained. Mm -hmm. uh, the script has been written. It's in concrete. There is right. no changing it. And this is my lot in life. Because you you made that reference earlier too. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I believe that we're that ball of clay, you know, and that we're shaping it along the way. I do believe that we're influenced. In, in Theta Healing, you talk about how there's four levels, basically. Now, basically, there's four levels. You can count them any way you want. So this is just the way it's counted here. So there's the core level, which is everything you're affected by, everything that happens in this lifetime. The second one is your ancestral level, your DNA. So you come in and we already know this. Um, we, already, we already know that we're carrying the traumas, right? Of our ancestors, we're carrying their, we identify with our ancestors. We identify with their suffering and what they believed and all those sort of things. And then we've got, history level, which is our past life level and our collective consciousness. And then the soul level is the deepest part of all of those other three. So there's a lot of people on your board of directors for everything that you do. You still have to take hundred percent responsibility because you make the final decision. Mm -hmm. But let's say you want to get married and, and the and the ancestors are saying, get married. And then collect the collective consciousness is like, don't you be tied down. What happens if it doesn't work? You know, and, and you're listening to everything going, I don't know. I don't know. And you base it on something in your childhood and then you go, oh, I'm getting married, you know, or, oh, I'm not getting married or I'm, you know, I keep marrying the same kind of woman, you know, <laughs> I, mm -hmm. think, or I keep mm -hmm. dating the same kind of person. And is the, they're always my father. I keep marrying my father over and over and over again. Right. There's, there's, there's patterns that, that happen in our lives. And so we want to get in there and really be able to change those deeply embedded patterns mm -hmm into something else and yeah. it changed then they can change slowly it can change quickly it just everybody's different yeah. i used to that that analogy of the individual walking in a meadow uh, carrying their yeah. will in the palm of their hands and they're they've got it cupped in front of them saying i just want to do god's will i just want to do god's will and they toss it god catches it has is compressing it while tears are rolling down god's face and basically rears back and hurls it back slap uh, hits them square in the forehead with their their own will compressed to a baseball and he says, then do something with the life I gave you. You are not a puppet on a string being manipulated by forces you do not understand. And some right. of those forces are not external. As a matter of fact, probably 95, maybe 99% of them are all internal because of, again, what you talked about earlier, the traumas. Uh, I mean, I never even considered uh, because maybe because my lifestyle didn't change that much when the, the lockdown came in 2020 with COVID. Right. Um, but a lot of people are using the term PTSD uh, to describe the suffering, the pain, the anguish, the this, the that, the, the other that they mm -hmm. they went through because of the virus, because of the lockdown, right. because of the restrictions and on and on and on and on. And I'm just I just have to sit back and say. Okay, I I hear you. You had this experience because right. uh -huh. I, you know, that that wasn't my experience. I was still going to work because I was the only mm -hmm. one there. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it was pretty easy. Yeah. It was pretty easy. You had the perfect job. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Karen Abrams, right. my guest, and we're talking about her Theta Healing, uh, uh, and we're going to talk about the the uh, uh, the mastering your money uh, mastering money uh, uh, quiz here as we continue here on Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, and you are listening to a program that is talking about, and I'm going to put it in this context, it is it is talking, we are talking about, Karen Abrams and I, about the ways that we can better embrace and incorporate into our lives, into our being, 
the abundance, the prosperity, the money, the finance, the wealth, uh, and so forth and so on, that I think we all want to a greater or lesser degree, okay? And we all deserve, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make the differentiation, Karen, between that we all deserve because of who we are, who mm -hmm. we are, and not entitled because mm -hmm. I'm better than this person over here and this and right. I have th then all these categories of I grew up in this city or this state. I grew up in this family with this last name, blah, 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 that we, we are, we deserve it because of who we are. And again, that goes back to what you said earlier, the self. Right. Yeah. Let's jump into this quiz, a break down the categories. We can go through the questions too, but what are the, the categories of, of these, uh, the, the sections of this quiz? And yeah, you can use mine. Let's let's use yours. I haven't looked at it in a little while, so I don't remember the categories offhand. I must have looked at it once real quick, and I I, I must have <laughs> missed the meditation. Uh huh. Oh yeah. At the bottom, you get where it says, "Oh, if you're a money avoider, then do this meditation." Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So, what are the categories? What are the what's the breakdown? So let me look because I have not looked at this in a very long time. So we're gonna we're gonna do homework together here. I did do it though. Yeah. <laughs> I know you did because I have it uh, in a PDF format uh, yeah, file exactly. uh, that I was just so looking at a little see. while ago. And oh. it was accurate, uh, especially in the context of um, uh, the first two categories that I know are in that right. list. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, and it, it, I, it's not so much that I felt bad that, oh, gee, I'm a penny pincher and, and I'm a, you know, and I don't, you know, da, da, da. it's like, no. It is not uh, a judgment. It's an evaluation. It's just saying that's where Absolutely. you were when you took the test. Right. Okay, so exactly. go ahead. So first we talk about how you relate to money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, you could, I'm asking questions like, will you avoid balancing your checkbook? Are you afraid to see how much money you have in the bank? You know, mm -hmm. do you wait to pay your bills till you're warned about it or do you pay your taxes at the last minute? Do you avoid making a budget? Okay, so these are some of the questions. Um, can you count on other people uh, saving you financially? Um, are you embarrassed that you don't know enough about money? So these are just some of the ways that we relate to money just personally, right? That's that personal relationship that we have with it. And just and if you think about this, um, what if if you related this to a person, right? Mm -hmm. So you could say, uh, I don't talk to you till I need you. Right. I only call you when I need you. Otherwise, I avoid you. So when you call me, I never call you back. Mm. That creates a lot of resentment. Right. And a pushback like, mm, I don't think they're that good of a friend. Right. And um, and I'm counting on you to save me. <laughs> mm. mm -hmm. You know, if you think about that, then then. Um, let's see, I'm, I have to answer all these questions in order for me to move on. This is so funny. So I'm just going to put no on everything. Just I understand. One of the other things too, as you're doing that is um, uh, uh, the, 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 the aspect of one's own intuition. Uh, uh, and and yeah. I can share uh, real quickly that uh, uh, I had a situation a few years back where there was this financial situation that was developing and right. I had this plan. I had a plan. Uh, mm-hmm. And I kept getting this prompting. No, you need to do this. And mm -hmm. I go, no, that that that's completely opposite of the plan that I have. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. persisted and persisted. And finally, I'm I finally I acquiesced. I still mm -hmm. made the choice. I'm still responsible, but I acquiesced. And a few days after I made the uh, the decision and I took the uh -huh. action based upon the choice, uh -huh. I looked back and go and I went. Wow, I am sure glad I did that three days ago right. because if I hadn't today, it would have been it would be a lot worse. Yeah. 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 You kind of knew, you know, you could look at it like there's an angel on your shoulder and yeah. whispered in your ear if you want, or is that your intuition knowing yeah. before Either you way. really know? Yeah. Either right? way, thank you. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you. Either way, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I feel so blessed and grateful that that's absolutely. You know, that I, I got there before. So yeah. the second, it looks like the second is now. So that first one, they're based on archetypes, which then you find out which one you have. Mm -hmm. First one was about, are you a money avoider? 
The second one is a penny pincher. Mm -hmm. So there's questions like, are you tight with money? Do you believe your money could go all, could all go away in an instant? There's never enough money. Getting a good deal is more important than getting good quality. I'm just, I'm not taking, doing all of them. You have a hard time spending money on yourself for luxury items or even practical gifts. So well, I, and I will um, share these are you, the kinds of things. Yeah. Well, yeah. I will share that my wife has sh- sort of uh, inculcated in our uh, situation, our relationship uh, and in uh-huh. me, um, the perspective of buying quality and mm-hmm. taking care of what you do buy and what you do have mm-hmm. rather than my perspective for a long time was always, nah, if it, I can always buy another one. And I remember an interview many years ago with a gentleman who wrote a book, wrote a book called mm-hmm. Built in Obsolescence. And I'm oh, going, interesting. what? Why? Uh-huh. And of course, it's of course to help to boost the economy. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, hold it. Why would I want to buy something that is uh, the warranty is three years? And at the end of three years, literally to the day after the three years, it breaks down. And now I have to go right. down. Right. Uh, and and, right. and that's why when I, I talk with people about, you know, well, do, do we buy American? Uh, do we buy uh, Ecuadorian? Right. Do we buy Chinese, Japanese, German? Right. And, and of course, in this country, many people are very patriotic, say always buy American. It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. but if it's crap, why would right. I want to buy quality. it? Right. And and I'm not real thrilled with buying uh, uh, products made in China, not because it's China and the government. It's because it's not quality. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's like they make it just to make it to sell, I guess, to us because we're right. so gullible that we'll we'll just keep buying it and buying it and buying it, even if it breaks down. And I'm mm-hmm. just I'm tired of that. Matter of fact, there was a pair right. of shoes that I bought when we used to visit Santa Barbara back mm-hmm. in the late 1990s into the 2000s. A SAS wow. pair of shoes. Do uh-huh. you know how long okay. those SAS shoes lasted? 13 oh. years. 13 wow. years. Nice, nice. Now, wow. if that is not a ringing endorsement, I wish they were an advertiser uh, for SAS shoes. I don't know what else is because when your shoes last like yeah. that, and I paid over $150 and I'm going, I've never, and when I bought them, I've never right. paid hundred. Why would I want to pay hundred and fifty dollars? Da, 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 da. Again, it goes back to one of the things my wife said. You know, buy right. quality and take care of what you have. Mm-hmm. Anyway, mm-hmm. continue. Um, what is that? Oh, I think my brother said something funny. He's like, buy it at a like a quality price or pay. It was like buy at a high price or pay twice, something like that. Uh, yeah, you know, I, so I've heard it, that too. I've heard that too. Yeah. yeah. And and obviously high price, you have to you have to see quality. You've got to see quality. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Matter of fact, so, we bought a washer just recently. It was over a thousand dollars. Right. Oh yeah, that's where they're at. All right. And it, it's electronic. It's a, it's a, I think it's a Samsung, same brand as my, mm-hmm. my phone. However, right. you can't link the two uh, and I wouldn't want to <laughs> anyway. Uh, and we really, and we really like it and it does the job that we want and uh-huh. you know, we'll see how long it lasts. But anyway, I, I think uh-huh. your brother's probably uh, very accurate in that regard that if you're going to, if you're going to pay, make right. sure you're paying for quality. And I would say if Absolutely. you're going to pay a high price for something and it offers a protection plan, I get it. Mm-hmm. Cause right. what's an extra 20 bucks or 30 bucks uh, right. to a thousand or 1500 or whatever it is. Um, yeah. You know, Absolutely. that's a pittance. And at least, you know, that it's covered by some kind of, you know, protection insurance. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. no, no, absolutely. You want to, you want to make sure you're getting quality and, and kind of going from there. That Now the, the next arc, type on this is the love hate relationship with money Mm. so this is does your bank balance dictate your mood this is a big one for people right i mean who who doesn't feel better if they've got a lot in their you know in their bank account and and who doesn't feel better if there's eight dollars left you know some people who have faith and go it's fine that it's eight dollars i'm gonna make it all you know it's coming in tomorrow anyway so we're good you know yeah so people can look at that and, and have different reactions to that do you resent wealthy people to some degree but would love to be one of them. Do you aspire to earn enough to pay your bills when you struggle financially? Your resentment towards money increases. And do you consider anyone amassing or enjoying their wealth to be less spiritual than you are or less spiritual in general? 
Mm. Your desire to have money is great. Yet the thought of having too much of it is disconcerting, right? And have you ever thought of, well, what if I won the lottery and I want a hundred million dollars? Yeah. Now I've got to worry about my family getting kidnapped. You know, a lot of people think that like if I, if I win too much, even though they want to win that money so they could help everybody and help themselves, right? they feel like I'm going to lose something very valuable by gaining this money. There's and a that's another prophecy thing, again. Right? Yeah. yeah another prophecy. Exactly. Exactly. And um, then the last one here is, let's see, what is this archetype here? See, you enjoy using your money for goods and services for your immediate pleasure. Oh yeah, the spender. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the spender. So this is <laughs> you know people who get a rush out of spending, right? And and once again, there's no judgment because you could probably find a little bit of yourself in a lot of these. Yeah. And or in all four of these, it's definitely true that that could happen. So, um, it's this just gives you a mark of where you're at marker of where you're at now. And then gives you, like we said, these energetic downloads to help you improve that relationship, move it up, move it to become more healthy, which is what, you know, that's all you want. You want to have a good, healthy relationship with money, and then it's going to come back to you. It's going to support you and it's going to help you move forward. So here we go. Do you enjoy buying gifts for others, helping out and treating people? You're willing to spend money to make life a blast. Do you get a thrill from buying something? Um, it doesn't really matter what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, you can regret a purchase after the bills roll in. And um, my mother, God bless her, was a, a big, she was a spender. She was a compulsive spender. And so I remember when she was moving from one house to the other, we found in her closet, in this beautiful closet, there were beautiful clothes that still had price tags on them. Oh, wow. Because it was the rush that she wanted and boots, gorgeous shoes. I was so upset that I didn't wear a six and a half because <laughs> I was an eight and a half. I couldn't even squeeze in it if I wanted to. <laughs> you, had the, you know, like great shoes. Like, that's just so sad. Yeah. And um, so <laughs> well, I, you know, and uh, so, uh, I, I have a hat that yeah. I wear. I use I used to wear it during the interviews, uh -huh. but because I can't get the lighting right, my hat would disappear as uh -huh. I would move around. Um, but oh, I, have, yeah. I, I have three of them. I have three of them. Now, one of them is a work hat. Uh -huh. I will use it here on the Hill when I'm working outside. Uh -huh. uh, but I have two others that I actually went ahead and I bought a steamer because when I went to send it to the cleaners to get it cleaned, the cleaning uh -huh. was as expensive uh -huh. as if I just bought a new one. And it was still uh -huh. perfectly okay. good yeah, all I have to do is uh -huh. steam it a little bit, you know, pat it and all this kind of stuff. Uh -huh. and, and and I can clean it myself and it'll be just fine. It'll look fine mm -hmm. and so forth. Again, it's another one of those things taking care of uh, your things. Right. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's it's interesting. And uh, yeah, and I, I fell into each one of those categories, um, uh, you know, in terms of, yeah, I, I'm a, spin, a penny pincher in in the sense that I'm I monitor. And that was the other aspect of the first category mm -hmm. in that it's not that I am afraid. I, I, it's not a question of, I mean, who, who balances their checkbook anymore? All you have to do is go onto your app and you can see where you are and you can see what's pending. Right. Yeah, it's exactly. clear. Mm -hmm. So they've made it again, once again, they've made it very easy, but what mm -hmm. I would do is I would be checking that throughout the day, not only to make, see what has cleared, but also to make sure that nobody had stolen. Cause this happened to me twice. I went to a gas right. station, used oh, the debit okay. card. And the next thing I know, $1,300 had disappeared to someplace, believe it or not, I yeah. tracked it all the way to Malaysia. I got the money back, yeah. of course, but you know, um, but, but I, I watch from that standpoint. So I don't know if that falls under that category of, uh, necessarily balancing your checkbook, but I'm certainly observant. I I'm watching, making sure that, mm -hmm. okay, oh, thank, mm -hmm. oh, good, the rent check cleared. Oh, good, the car payment cleared. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. groceries, we're, oh, yeah, we, and, and, the, and the balance goes down and down and down. And it's like, okay, right. but we still have enough in there to cover the rest of the bills. And this right. is something I think we talk about going back to what I said at the begin beginning of the program, being grateful, even if it comes in and goes out. 
be grateful right. that it was there to pay for the electricity and the car insurance and the groceries and right. uh, whatever it whatever else it is that somebody needs. I mean, my wife likes she has uh, her needs for a certain kind of shampoo. Uh, she has mm -hmm. a need for a certain kind of face cream and so on and so on. Um, you know, with uh, me, a, a guy, I don't have those kinds of things, but um, you know, I've got a, I've got a, a prescription face cream for rosacea, but that's a whole nother uh -huh. thing. That's, that's different. That's medical more than anything else. Uh, but I think that, that, that aspect of gratitude for whatever you have. Yeah. And then I want to talk a little bit in terms of these categories as well, this aspect of making room for more, even though, all right, let's just say the bank account only has the eight dollars. I've got room for plenty, but right, yeah. that's not that's not where we need to make the room. The, yeah, the bank account it's got more than enough right, room, right, right. But that's right. not where we need to make the room. Where do we need to make the room? Well, in your allowance, mm -hmm. in your receiving, now, and in your heart, exactly mm -hmm. in your heart, because like the people who work with me tend to be people who are the rocks in in the their family's life. They're the rock of their friends. They give great advice. And they're also caught in that sandwich generation, right? They're taking care of kids that are coming up and they're taking care of aging parents. Mm. And then they have a business or they're, you know, professional or there's something like that. They're working. So there's a lot of places where everybody else's needs are getting met before yours. Yeah. And so what happens, what's really interesting about that when I really was diving into it is that they become the best place to cancel plans was with yourself. The easiest place instead of calling somebody else and say, I can't go to lunch. Sorry. I know you have a big problem. You wanted to talk to me about it. I had it right. And so, and this is the way that women were raised, right? To sacrifice ourselves and help other people. That's just an earning, earning our existence. That's the way mm -hmm. we earn our existence. Yeah. And so when you, when you come from that kind of place, you, you start breaking these little micro promises to yourself all the time and think about it this way. Remember when you're a kid, and your parents said, I'm going to take you to blue, blah, blah, right? I'm going to take you to ice cream. We're going out to dinner tonight. And you're like, it's been waiting all day to do this thing. Or I'm going to take you to this place, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And then it gets, it's five o'clock. You're ready to go. And I can't do it. The client called. I can't go. I'm sorry. I have to do this other thing. Your grandma called. I have to go over whatever. And you're like, but you promise. You <laughs> promise, right? And we were so upset. And your parent is, you know, I'm so sorry, honey, or whatever, you know, whatever happens right there. Right. But you are devastated that they use the P word and then it didn't happen. It's supposed to happen when you do that. And so when you make these tiny little micro break, these little micro promises yourself, I'm not going to get a chance to meditate today. I'm not going to get a chance to take my walk. I've got to go here. No, I can't play my guitar. I can't do this. It's crazy. I have too many things to do. All these things are happening. And so and so there's fires here. There's fires here, right? You're putting out all the fires. So pretty soon those little micro broken promises add up to a whole bunch where we lose faith in ourselves mm. and faith in our ability to change our lives. We don't believe we can do it anymore because yeah. you've never kept your promise to me ever. Yeah. So what am I thinking that you're the one, you know, the me of you, right? <laughs> the you of me. That, that I'm going to be able to do this when, what, right? Yeah. So we we have to lean into giving ourselves that time again, giving ourselves time to do the things that make us happy because we forgot, a lot of times we've forgotten how to have fun. And you can, you can do things simply. They don't have to be, you know, rent a Rolls Royce and go out with your friends partying, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to spend money to do it. You can do it in a very reasonable way in that way where you're just doing something that you love to do and remembering what used to make you happy if you can't remember what's going on in the moment you know of what yeah. makes you happy just lean back and give yourself five minutes give yourself 10 or 15 or 20 minutes and make a little date with yourself that's unbreakable now obviously something comes down you've got it you, you know if there's emergencies obviously but if there's anything less than that yeah then doing that rebuilds that trust you have in yourself it builds that confidence you have in your own ability to change your life and how you feel. Mm -hmm. And that's where we have to start to, to gain that confidence and that trust back. Mm -hmm. Cause then we'll trust the universe more too, without being, you know, we don't have to believe that, that, you know, uh, God will provide all the time 
in order for if we don't believe that you know what, what i mean it's it's we want to be able to get into that state but still see what's going on around us right yeah. and still add our actions and our energy to what we're doing i do believe that this lifetime we're co-creating that it's not etched in stone at all yeah. and i think there's lots of potentials for greatness to happen mm -hmm. because you're born with these musical gifts and you can play seven instruments by the time you're six years old you came in with a gift Let's focus in on that gift so that you can give that to everybody and everybody can see. Is that your mm -hmm. destiny? Sure is your option, right? Mm -hmm. But if you want to run away from your gift and nobody knows how good you are and you just want to play for yourself, well, maybe you'll make yourself happy, but you won't have that destiny of the great blah, 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 right? Yeah. You'll, you'll go somewhere else. So I just think we have the choices, like you're saying, there's choices we're making and there's decisions we're making along the way as we find out what our gifts are and do we want to share them and we want to do that. And that gratitude is so important to, mm -hmm. to, you know, to feel like you have a rich life and to know where you have that rich life and is so the more you focus in on that, whenever it's going to show up, the, the universe will keep giving you reasons to be more grateful. Yeah. It's just part of those laws, you know, of giving and receiving and, and, and of gratitude. You know, aside from this conversation, uh, most of the interviews that I do, and then when I go into the radio station to to do uh, to produce programs, or I need to do some editing, some pr production in that regard, and if my mind has been on, I'll just use the term the, the dollar sign, or no matter what the right. conversation in the head is, it almost gets pushed out for mm -hmm. a period of time because. I took my father's advice and I probably took it long before he ever gave it to me, but I'm glad he gave it to me anyway. And that was Richard, you need to find something you love doing because you're going to be doing it for a long time. Right. Don't get stuck right. like me, which he did not. And I was fortunate. Uh, there, there have been two jobs in my lifetime that mm -hmm. I loved and love doing. One of them is what I do now as a broadcast producer in this career of right. 45 years. The other one started when I was in eighth grade as a paper boy. And I, yeah. I swear, if even at 64, if that yeah. job were available, uh -huh. I would take it again. The way it was, uh -huh. the bicycle, the baskets in the back, the big paper bag uh -huh. in the front, uh, going out, collecting money, because I got to meet some incredible people. And I think that's part of the reason why this is such a joy for me too because i get to meet right, yeah. incredible people and have great conversations i made a lot of good friends uh along the way being a paper boy uh for five years from eighth grade through uh -huh. high school all the way through senior year uh, uh -huh. and i had some money issues during that time i uh, matter of fact believe it or not even in the eighth grade uh i was i wasn't delivered for very long i was fired for uh -huh misappropriation of funds i was spending the money that i was collecting on uh, models <laughs> that i was building airplanes and oh, ships and, okay didn't... that kind of thing <laughs> uh it was still misappropriation of funds because i wasn't able to pay the paper bill but they right. hired me, they hired me back after a while uh -huh. and and i managed to uh, keep a fairly fairly stable ship fairly stable uh -huh. ship. um the one thing you said that I'd love for us to touch upon here real quickly, and that has to do with sure. trusting the universe. Uh, that has to, sounds to me like that does have to be in balance with everything else that you've yeah. talked about here. Yeah. You can't just um, carte blanche. Now, my wife and I, when we decided mm -hmm. to move to Santa Barbara, we'd both lost our jobs. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting in front of the TV. And she says, mm -hmm. I'm scared. I feel like we're on the edge of a cliff. And of course, I said, well, everything I have read, all the programs I've been through, the authors I've interviewed, and on and on and on, mm -hmm. there's only one answer I can think of or one, you know, one conclusion I can come to. They all would say that when you come to the edge of a cliff, and I remember processing this thinking, this, this, this order is counterintuitive. It should be the other way around, but it's not, and it's appropriate. You jump and uh -huh. you trust. Not the other way around. You mm -hmm. jump and trust. And we did. And I had no fear, none whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, May of 2006, here we are. And we've been here ever right. since. And mm -hmm. I still hold that out there to the universe saying, look, when you are ready for us to move, physically move somewhere else, 
you will make a way just like you did in 2006. But I am still going to be doing what I can do to Uh be ready for that time. And that's what I've been doing for the last 18 years. Um, Right. Talk to us about, because again, you've got two things there and they're kind of the same thing. Our intuition, i.e., you know, versus and not versus so much, uh, but in combination with trusting the universe, the great universe, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh-huh. balancing well, really, that with something else right you, you've got to you've got to have discernment and know and, and see what's going on and then understand that if you trust and you, you know it's all about doing taking the actions that you need to take having and using trust to help you along the way having mm-hmm. the discernment to know that well gee if i'm selling uh you know fur coats in Florida, that's probably not a good idea. You know, it's wet and hot <laughs> and rainy. This is not going to work, right? Yeah. So you need to have discernment in there to know what, you know, what needs to be tweaked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so is, is God going to provide that, that if you, you know, you try to sell it there? You know, I I would say that maybe you should look at a different product that might be selling a little bit better than that. Yeah. So you have to balance these things and the trust and the trust is just, but the trust is really, really important. Yeah. Trust is very important in creating that. And as long as it's, how do you say it? Blind trust, I think is a bit, I think you have to see what's there too. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean you, like, if you see something in the, like you said, if you see the cliff, you can still choose to jump Yeah. and then trust. You can do that. That's fine. If you have blind you know, faith or, or blind trust. And then it really doesn't look like it's going to pan out this way. Then maybe that discernment is trying to help you guide it with that intuition, yeah. guide you down a different path so that you can be provided for, mm-hmm. you know, and exactly. you can match these with. So, so being really aware, you know, a lot of people, even in very complicated times, which we are tending to be in right now, there's a lot of really savvy people who went, oh, I just need to shuffle the deck this way. I mean, remember when, so when COVID hit a lot of restaurants, I it was some crazy number, 60% of the restaurants went down. It was just a mm-hmm. crazy number. Mm-hmm. But the remember, I just remember there were some places that were about 20 minutes away from here that were restaurants and, and um, that were like popular, but, but, you know, they decided to start delivering produce, yes. right? And they took their delivery people and they said, Hey, you want produce? We'll send you produce. So, because we know you can't go. And so it was brilliant and simple. It was like, Oh, they get all this food. Why don't they, you know, let's pass it along. Yeah. And people, you know, people shuffled the deck in ways that still use their talents and their gifts. Mm -hmm. And, and then some people didn't. And and that's the thing about fear. Fear is a completely natural emotion for us to have. Sure. It's just that if it takes over our lives, we don't go anywhere. You know, right? yeah. we run into the forest fire. We don't run out of it, yeah. and um, and so it just freezes us. And that's when we've got to, we've we've got to figure things out. I had this woman who, or a, kind of an example of that, where she grew up in a very emotionally abusive house. Okay, parents had tempers, especially dad. And, um, and she, she tried to earn her existence as much as possible through achievement so that, you know, she was kind of appeasing the lion, right. The angry lion in the house. And, um, so that when she got older, she, and she was old enough to get jobs, she started getting jobs where the, she had the same kind of, kind of parent in a boss, right. That someone who mm-hmm. gaslit, who blamed her for their problems. And, and so this was going on from job to job to job. And so we worked on healing all that trauma that she had in those in in her childhood mostly, and then the traumas that happened along the way because she was kind of dating the same boss, so to speak, right? She kept courting the same kind of energetically. She was so used to that that unconsciously she was attracting that into her life to work it out. And so when we we worked on all this trauma work and, and healed her, and and I always call this work like the lightest way to let go of the heaviest things in your life. So we're not going back and going, oh my God, this thing happened and all. Oh, I can't go back to the house where this happened. Right? We're not doing that. No, we're saying no. this energy has stained you. It has marked you. And all of those people who want to, who are traumatized and want to traumatize others are looking at you and going, mm. oh, you have no boundaries. I can get you. I can get you to do what I want. And so yeah. 
you kind of just attract each other. But when you heal this stuff this way, saying this is just trapped energy, let's learn what you're meant to learn from the situation. Let's let go of it. Let's bring that love and compassion in there and move on. Then you yeah. get to go somewhere else. And, and that's what she did. And she finally found a job. So amazing. She's got an incredible boss. Same thing, a company that really needed her help and her expertise. And the problems started showing up. She started solving them. And he was like, thank you. And all the people who were working there saying, thank you. You are a godsend. Oh my gosh, you're the best thing that's ever happened to us. Yeah. And, and she's being supported by the boss. You know, like, just like, you're doing a great job. I know this is really tough stuff we've been working on for a while, but keep going. I love what you're doing. We're really grateful for you. Yeah. And so finally, after all this time, all that stuff cleared and all that stuff cleared. And let's bring back into this. I, she started leaning into what made her happy. Mm. And instead of just mm -hmm. sacrificing herself for other people and helping other people, mm. she went back and went, what do I need? Oh, I think I need meditation. What else do I need? I think I need to do things that I really love to do. Mm. I think I need to see my friends more. You know, and all these things, yeah. she started doing them. All of that together brought her to a job that has been wonderful. And she's making wonderful money. And yeah. she's like, yes, I got it. You know, <laughs> Karen Abrams is my guest. We're talking about uh, Theta Healing. She is a Theta Healing, uh, he Theta Healer, a Master Healer, actually, a Theta Master Healer. ThinkTheta.com will be linked to that website. We encourage you to go there as we continue here on Tell Me Your Story. This is Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan. Karen Abrams, my guest, you talked about a meditation. Now, I know that yes. probably at the end of these questionnaires uh, that we answer, we get the results back, that it's maybe right. a little, is it a little different meditation for each questionnaire? Yes. Or is it a, so to speak, a, a one, I don't want to say one fits all, but it's it's the one that you recommend for people if they want to change their mindset, raise their consciousness when it comes to money and so on and so forth. Uh, can you talk to us about that and how we can how we can do that? Well, with with all of these things, we said the money avoider, the spender, the love hate relationship, and the penny pincher, right? So these different aspects of your personality that are based on the experiences that you've had on all these levels that we were talking about before. And, and primarily also just in this lifetime, right? So these, at the bottom, it'll say, okay, well, you, if you scored a six or higher, right? And you're a money avoider, listen to this. And this is where I go into a theta session with you, a mini theta session, about five minutes long, where I'm going to say, would you like to know what it feels like to be safe? Like, what is money? Like, you go into different things like, what are the, what's the most loving definition of money? What is, um, does it feel safe for you to be in your body and in the world? You know, what does that feel like? What does it mm -hmm. feel like to be completely loved, completely valued, mm -hmm. you know, completely listened to and acknowledged because it might be that the reason you are an avoider is because there was so much trauma in that space that you couldn't get, you know, you couldn't, you can get away from it. So these are ways you're getting these feelings because when we don't know what it feels like to be loved, it's very difficult for us to find someone to love and have them love us back because the person that we're going to find is going to have the same negative beliefs that we have. So if I find somebody who doesn't know what it feels like to be loved and, and they don't know, and I don't know, we have the opportunity to figure it out together and, or we don't figure it out and we sabotage the relationship and we go in different directions, right? Mm. It happens a lot. So in this, you can literally energetically, like a computer download, download the feelings with your permission so that you can have that reference point. I know what it feels like to be valued. Now, I didn't because my dad never listened to me and my mom was too busy doing things around the house. She couldn't, you know, she was so busy in her own world and trying to take care of all of us that she didn't really take care of us emotionally, just physically. And so, so now I know what it feels like to be loved. Now I know what it feels like to be cherished and nurtured. I never got that from my parents. Dang, you know, but now I kind of feel it. Mm -hmm. And and it's, and I'm like, Ooh, that's kind of wild. I actually feel that that's happening. And you just move through the world a little bit differently. And because of that, you start attracting different people in different kinds of situations. You may not look into an investment that seemed a little sketchy before, like before you might've felt desperate, like this could double my money. This could triple my money. I should do it. And even though all the signs are there for, for this not to work at, you know, for this to be different than it, it sounds like, but I'm going to do it. Cause I, I, you know, cause I'm desperate. 
right? Desperate people do those sorts of things when they need the money the most, a lot of times they lose it because that mm. desperation, they're grasping for anything yeah. that's coming to them, but they're not listening and they're not watching and they're not hearing. There's, all, not the, yeah. there's also that lesson of of the lottery winners uh, who right. uh, they are in that attitude of lack. They've been there for years what, yeah. for whatever reasons. And then they win the multi-million. Right. Uh, one guy won a billion or what have you. Anyway, and they've tracked this. And one year later, most of them are right back where they started from yeah. for a lot of different reasons. But yeah. that ties into a lot of other subjects that I could I could bring up. I wanted to bring up yeah. uh, uh, the issue, uh, the, the, the aspects of the law of attraction. I wanted to yeah. bring up the the uh, uh, some other concepts uh, as well in terms of uh, our um not only not just our relationship with money, but now we're th- 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 there's the aspect of um, uh, uh, again the the whole aspect of gratefulness in terms of prosperity. I mean, as I shared with mm-hmm. you about my well, my very first commercial radio job, uh-huh. I started out minimum wage 1980 with uh, three dollars and sixty five cents an hour. Fifteen uh-huh. years later, I was making a whopping seven dollars and 35 cents an hour and during that period of time i met a lot of people that came through the station uh employees who complained that oh you don't pay me enough to do this or that or the other and this kind of thing and i could have gone down that road but i was given a a time slot in the evening where i could do interviews and i started to look at that and i'm going wait a minute okay so i'm still making this minimum wage all right i i get that but Uh maybe i'm getting paid in other ways. And, and it was, I was given the time slot. They weren't charging me for it. I was an employee and what do you, you know, they're not, they didn't sell it. And if they did, I'd move it and so forth. I'm, I'm getting the contacts. I'm getting the materials. I'm getting the experience. Um, uh, not only in terms of like doing the interviews, but also the scheduling and, 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 and all of that kind of stuff. And I was also learning about comparative religions uh, the different sects of Christianity, but 